Hello, my Bill for Thousand Nation. How's everyone doing today? Hopefully, everyone's having a great day. If not, I hope it gets better from here. All right, we are back with another That Chapter. This one is titled Husband's Deadly Rage After Finding Her Secret Emails. <coughs> I have a feeling it's, it's, it's going to get bad. I'm excited. Let's go ahead and get into the story. Go ahead, turn the mice down low, put on something comfy, cup or someone special. Let's get traumatized. I have a feeling it's going to be slightly traumatizing. I'm ready, though. Yeah. Hey, you, and welcome. My name is Mike, and hey, in this old video, we are... How you doing today, bud? Doing okay, Mike? Good deal. Strapping on our boots, putting on our shoes, or just going barefoot. It's up to you to the state of New York. That's a heavy, that is a heavy hitter state. And we're not even talking New York City. In fact, pretty much all the stories I tell about New York are not set in New York City, but we keep going back there and the stories are always, frankly, weird as s. Today we are talking Tagliatelli. Oh, sorry, Tag, Tag what's his name? Uh, Taglianetti, I knew I should have eaten. A man living happily with his <laughs> wife and his kids. We're also talking Reed, a father. Bro, eating food. Made it to where I could pronounce names better. I would be huge. I can't pronounce names right. Shit. Other, though himself, spouse less. Does not mean loveless. Just outside of Buffalo, there would be a violent incident. And no, I know what you're thinking. It wasn't the Bills Mafia smashing another table. There were gunshots. And it would all lead back to a couple of clackety clackety emails that were, well, very angry. You know, the tone of writing and emails can be kind of very hard to tell sometimes. Yeah. But the person who did this would make it very clear with a revolver. Oh, yeah. That's all right. Probably should have said this at the beginning. This was actually requested by a subscriber. We had done, we had covered this on another channel. <coughs> Excuse me. We'd covered this on another channel and. They said that chapter had done one, and I believe Nick Crawley had done one. So we're going to be covering both of them this week. You know how I like to hear different sides of the story. Plus, that dude is a piece of shit. And just before we get into it, please subscribe to see two Spots. brand new true crime videos every week on Tuesdays and on Fridays. Let's give it a go. Let's give it a go. So first of all, let's say this, and I will say it. Imagine flying into Buffalo, right? And you, you land in Buffalo, Western New York. There you got, you got your bills, you got your delicious chicken wings and snow. Well, you arrive there, you hop in a car, and you drive about an hour and a half <laughs> southwest. And arrive safely, I hope, in the village of Clymer, New York. And I say arrive safely because you might have to dodge a few drunk drivers, because it is a dry town. Dry shite, more like. No booze in Clymer since 74. Damn. Clymer is home to less than 2,000 That's people. That's awful. And it's very picturesque with the forests. I'm sorry, some places, in order to live there, you have to drink. If you're not a drinker, don't move to those places. The same. How else are you supposed to find fun? And the windmills and the yada yada yada. Have to say though, this view would be a lot better with a nice cold one in my hand, <laughs> hanging with the fellas. It's a small town where everyone knows your name, and a name everyone would have known was Keith Reed. Super Nintendo Reed to you. Okay. In the year 2012, Keith L. Reed Jr. was 51 years of age, a native New Yorker. He was originally from Salamanca before landing in Chautauqua County, working as a school superintendent where the community embraced him. He had worked in the education system his entire life, studied it at Mansfield University before working as a teacher, then a principal, and finally a superintendent at Clymer Central yeah. Schools. Clymer, New York, home of the pirates. Yeah. Attended by a little less than 400. So he went from being like the hated teacher to the most hated person of the school. 
Oh, superintendents. Nobody likes them. I mean, they're important people. Just they gotta make the shitty decisions no one else wants to make, and they end up getting the shit for it. Students. <clears throat> When he wasn't uh, doing whatever a superintendent does, literally my only knowledge of a superintendent is The Simpsons. He was helping out in the Rotary Club. He was a member of the NRA. He loved golf. He loved tennis. Well, let me rephrase that. He liked all those things, but he loved his three daughters, Caitlin, Megan, and Allison. Keith Reed was divorced and had been mm -hmm. for a few years, and it had been painful but he was always devoted to his children. He had just walked his daughter Caitlin down the aisle, and Keith Reed was passionate about providing a good education for the next generation. Oh, yeah. Children are the future. Yep. I mean, that's what they say. I don't know how true that is. But Keith's future would come... I mean, even in the most loose of senses, they are the future. I mean, when we're dead and gone, they're still going to be here. Say the future to an abrupt end. which scares me because my kids they, they go derpy sometimes bro <laughs> i mean don't get me wrong i love my kids but i'm not one of those parents that says my kid's a genius he's gonna take over the world nah bro my kid's gonna attempt to take over the world trip and fall into a fucking volcano somehow the same i love them though be little shit. They're pretty. That's what that's that's what matters. And just a couple of weeks after the start of the autumn semester in 2012. On the 21st of September 2012, the principal of Climber uh, Central, he was driving by Keith's brand spanking new house he had just bought, having recently moved to the area. Now this day was a Saturday, but the principal driving past Keith's house, he noticed something odd about, about Keith's place. He saw Keith's two cars were still in the driveway. Now that was odd, and let me tell you why. Because that day, Keith, there was some kind of superintendent conference, sounds intense, in Albany. So he was thinking, oh, I thought Keith had to, you know, it's supposed to be, eh. Then when the principal was driving by his house again later on that day, he saw the cars were still there. So he er, drove in, was like, you know what? Knock, knock, knocking on your door. He decided, hey, Keith, what's up? You're around? How are you doing this fine Saturday? Yeah. No answer. Keith didn't seem like he was there. He was shouting, Keith, hey, you're in. Nothing. Keith was also... Yo, Keith. Keith. Got a six pack of the pizza here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not answering any calls that Saturday. Nothing. From, especially from his daughters and Keith, like he, he would move heaven and earth for his his girls. So like he would always, if he didn't answer, he would call back straight away to see if everything was okay with them. Mm -hmm. And he was the same the Sunday. So now his daughters are starting to worry. Fifty one years of age, still a you know middle aged guy, but they were like, oh, is he okay? Did he have a an accident? Something. They called Keith's brother, Kevin, a former FBI agent, to go over and see if he was okay. And Kevin would find out he wasn't... there. He wasn't... anything. But the house was kind of odd. Money was, was laid around. There was like a, a bag, half-packed, as if, you know, Keith had been preparing to go somewhere. He was ready to go. Maybe preparing to go to that, to that conference in Albany, when, while packing and getting ready to go, he had disappeared. Had he been interrupted by... something? The sheriff's deputies then arrived, and they noticed some things were off about Keith's place. One thing especially was that the outside lights on his house, they weren't working because the bulbs had been removed. That's weird. It was a strange <clears throat> situation. A lot of things here were odd, were weird. Gave, it gave him a bad news feeling, but there was oh, no yeah. signs of violence, no blood, no evidence, no nothing. No signs of, no signs of violence that autumn day. 
He had last been seen on the Friday night before the conference, out for Dinden with a friend, and now on Sunday he's gone. However, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be for long. Canines would lead the police out to hedges by his house. There, they found the body of 51-year-old Keith Reed. He'd been shot to death. Three times. Twice in the back, once in the chest. Execution style. A neighbour would also report to the police that they had heard three gunshots on the Friday evening at approximately 10pm. Likely, with the time from when he went out to dinner, Keith came home, he started packing, and whatever happened, happened then. So, who could do this? <coughs> the heartbroken community shared its grief tonight over the loss of Climber School Superintendent Keith Reed. In the tiny community of Climber, about 100 people came to Climber United Methodist Church to find healing and security after Senseless the shocking crimes. murder of school. Senseless crimes, bro. School Superintendent Keith Reed, right up the road. As investigators spent another day combing Reed's property for clues, one of his three daughters told us. That was a beautiful home, though. I ain't gonna lie. By phone that nothing was taken from the home, adding to the mystery of a motive. Keith was beloved by the community. They welcomed him with open arms. And this was my... It was the little girl. She didn't like how he was laughing at her in the book. She's just like, I'm gonna get you. All time, like, word gets around, especially if somebody's pissed off, you know, at somebody else. <clears throat> You're gonna hear about it. But there was none of that. In his own personal life? Nothing, really. The only thing that was, uh, like, hmm, weird was that on the Friday, the day it's believed he was killed, a guy had come into the school looking for Keith. He'd been asking to speak with him. No one knew who he was. He said he was from Connecticut, and he was asking about a job. But that was it. Keith wasn't in that day, so this guy then just left. So by the way, you know, the scene was... That's the shady shit. ...was this. Keith arrives home after going out for dinner with his friend. He starts packing for his trip to Albany. Some mysterious stranger arrives at his house and takes out the bulbs from the lights that are outside. And then, knock, knock, knocks on his door. Keith, in the middle of packing, goes downstairs, turns on the lights, but can't see if there's anybody outside his house. So he opens the door, goes out to have a look. Ambush. This guy shoots Keith twice in the back. As Keith is lying on, on the ground, bleeding out, once more, execution style. Who would ambush him? Well, one person quickly questioned was his on-again, off-again girlfriend, Kimberly. Love is a real bitch. So, did she... Did, did she have a something, something? Love gone bad? You see it a lot. Did he piss her off? Or we was there another lot. man in the... Snap. I just found out I was dead this morning. And then I show up and I found out he was shot. And now I feel like I'm a suspect never in a million years. But you are a suspect. Every... <laughs> Dude was shot twice in the back, once in the fucking head. Execution style. Everyone's a motherfucking suspect. That newborn baby born down the block, the motherfucker suspect too. He was looking at him awfully shady while drinking that bottle. You know what I mean? Get the fuck over yourself. You're making yourself look more guilty. You know what I mean? In a murder, everyone. Everyone's suspect. Everyone. I don't give a fuck who he is. I was that, there, there was a three-year-old in the house. Man, checking. Checking. I'm just saying, you can't trust shit no more. No matter what he said or did, did I ever <clears throat> consider or conceive the thought of harming him or hurting him or living without him. Her alibi, though, stood up. And so other leads you had to be like, who else might have a grudge against poor old Keith? Well, one thing was that when he was first reported missing on that Sunday night and the police that rocked up, one of the initial things the police actually did was do a ping on his phone to see if they could locate him that way. Oh, yeah. When the pin came back, it was all the way down in Harrisburg, over 200 miles away, like a four and a half hour drive from from, from where where they were in, in Western New York. How the fudge did it get there? Calls to it were eventually answered, but not by whoever took it there, however it got there. They were ringing it, construction worker, hey, I found this phone. Somebody had tossed it. The, the phone had been thrown off a bridge landing in a construction site. So if the killer had it and taken it, 
they were long gone. It was then the sheriff investigating Hell. Keith Reed's murder got a call, a very frantic one. A woman on the line was very upset and she was calling from all the way down in Virginia. And her name was Mary Taglianetti. Okay, just relax. Hey, stay with me. Relax. This is gonna be okay. Relax. Now, one of Keith's daughters was able to tell the police because no one knew who the frick Mary was. Uh, she, she, Keith's daughter was able to tell the police Keith had gone on a date with Mary two years prior to this. Two years. She lived in Woodridge, Virginia, and she spoke with the police. And she had a story to tell about Keith Reed. There it was. Keith's picture saying 51 year old Keith Reed shot to death. A couple of years back in, in 2010, Mary went on match.com and met. This is where shit just starts getting weird. Like, you know, really? You know what I mean? Keith Reed. They had met while Mary was living in Saratoga Springs, where Keith was originally from. Now, she was living there in uh, New York, having just separated from her husband of 11 years, Anthony Rob. He went by Rob Taglianetti. So Mary and Keith, they started clacking, clacking. They hit it off. Things were great. Now, Keith thought the marriage was rockier than it actually was because eventually Mary would reconcile with Rob, her husband, and she would move on back down. To Woodbridge, Virginia. Now, Keith and Mary, they only physically met once. They went out for dinner once, and then they, you know, after that, they had some dessert, you know what I'm saying? But that was it. That was the same day to Keith. He got burnt. That's an awfully expensive. His daughter recalled. Cost him his life. After that, she returned to Virginia. She returned to her husband, Rob. That's one dessert he could have went without. That's one time you said, No, I'm good. Oh, see, people. I don't care what they say. Even if they say, Yeah, we're, we're separate. No, no, motherfucker. Show me divorce papers. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want some. Feel good moments, and then everything get hucky door with you and the old man you're supposed to be separated from get back together, and then he's like, I did nothing but cry for six months without you. Well, I fucked this dude, and, you know. He's gotta die. That's a dessert that you don't want or need. No. I mean, that was that. Was that. Then, two years later, in spring 2012, she starts messaging Keith again on Facebook, telling him how unhappy she was in her marriage. Oh, get a therapist. At least they're paid to listen to your bullshit. Anyways, they right. spoke, and Keith, thinking she was either separated or divorced, she was not a married woman, then they start communicating. Things get steamy. Maybe things happen. And now Mary was telling all of this to the police. The spring of 2012, I had um, Facebook re friend requested him, and he wrote me a note saying, how are you? Okay. And that's how it kind of started. You know, the conversation just escalated, and he wanted to call me. Okay. So then we would talk for a couple of hours. Sorry, I, to, I don't know if it, she's that for you people, but uh, damn, like, I don't know. It was hurting my ear. Was on, and we, it's the frequency. I'm part dog or something. We trade emails. Anyway, Rob found some of the emails because I had accidentally left my email up. He got very upset. But then Rob Googled Keith's name, found out where he lived. Rob starts getting dressed and acting very upset. And and this was 11 o'clock at night, just recently, this last Thursday night. Okay. And she was telling him that her husband, Rob, had killed Keith. He'd gone up there, shot him dead. The marriage had been on the rocks for a long time, and I guess, well, he'd done the... Well, it's not unthinkable. It's pretty damn thinkable. Rob had been an active Marine. <laughs> 
and he was now a historian at the Marine Corps Museum in Quantico. And he was originally from Mystic, Connecticut. There was someone else who said they were from Connecticut. And where Keats' phone was found, where it had been tossed, you would drive through there on your way to Virginia, Woodbridge, Virginia. Da, da, it appeared bruh. from Mary's stories that Rob had found, stumbled across an email Mary had sent to Keith, thanking him for the previous night's phone sex. He then confronted her about it. This phone smells like vagina. What's going on? She was honest. <coughs> she told him. I'm telling you, I am 100% sure my husband did this. Okay. There's not even any doubt. Rob then demanded her passwords and sent some strongly worded emails to Keith. This was late August. But it was this long thing about, don't, don't you dare contact my wife ever again. And if you do, you're going to be sorry because I have the emails and I'll post it all over your school. Keith, don't ever contact my wife again. If you do, I will find out what school system you work at and take action. I did not divorce her, so don't get your hopes up. Get a life. Rob. Keith responded, Rob, don't contact or threaten me again or I will take action and tell your wife the same. Keith probably shouldn't have even bothered responding because Rob went insane after that. Emails, emails, emails. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna expose you. I'm gonna get you. I said that already. I'll print out these steamy emails and put them all over your school. Don't haunt, talk to me again. Don't ever talk to my wife. Yada, yada, yada. Like all caps. All caps. And Roll after up. those emails, Mary <clears> told <throat> the police that Rob got in a car and he drove off. I said, where are you going? And he said, where do you think I'm going? Mary thought he was just going to go up there and troll deck Keith here. Troll, troll punch. And that would be that. But it wasn't that. But Mary said that when Rob came home the next morning, he said to her, Keith wasn't there. So Mary's like, oh, whew. You know, all right, nothing happened until a couple of days later when she uh, read the news that Keith Reed had been shot dead. Does this look like him? Yes, that's him, yes. So now where was Rob? Well, nobody knew. Oh. A couple of days oh. after Keith's death, You're he told Mary he was going butt. camping. He left a note. Buddy, I'm sorry about this, but I do need to get away and work out some things. I love you very much, and I think this will create a lot of stress for you, but don't worry about things. God will provide. I'm going to do that camping trip. I have enough leave to cover myself at work till I plan to return on Thursday. Thursday came and went with no Rob. And the hunt for Rob was on. The Chautauqua County Sheriff has issued an all points <coughs> bulletin for a Virginia man wanted in the murder of Climber School Superintendent Keith Reed. This is the man he believes to be responsible for the cool. death yeah, of but... Climber School Superintendent Keith Reed. Well, I hate that term, to person of interest. He's a suspect. I'm sorry? He is a suspect. He is who we believe is responsible for the murder of Mr. Reed. 42-year-old Anthony Robert Tagley. Look, no, bitch, we ain't interested in him. We want him. He is the suspect. We are going to get him. And when we find him, we have these little sticks and then we hit people with them. Well, this time we're not even going to like hit him with it. We're going to shove it right up his ass. Repetitively. Without even spitting on him. Minetti from Virginia is considered armed and dangerous. His car, a gold Buick, <clears throat> was spotted near a national park in Virginia and he was pulled over. He surrendered without incident and he was charged with the murder of Keith Reed. On Sunday, we heard for the first time from Mary Taglianetti, who described the rocky relationship she had with her husband, Anthony, saying she wasn't surprised to hear about his arrest. I can tell you he was a very controlling man and I'm glad he is where he is right now. He's guilty and I'm glad he's there. We've had a, a rough uh, marital history. On his laptop, they found out that he had just booked tickets the same day as he was arrested um, for a flight out of America, a one-way ticket to Tel Aviv, Israel. So he was planning on just getting out of Dodge. Now, uh, Israel does have extradition with the United States, so they would have just sent him right back. But um, maybe he would have gone to Israel and then you know, hopped over the border to yep. like Lebanon or something, which does not have an extradition. Yeah, just because he's going to Israel, I mean, don't mean shit. He, he, military, he, he knows people. He knows how to disappear. He's going to get over there. He's going to work for someone, make some cash, and you're never going to see him again. That's how it's going to go. 
treaty with America. Virginia man accused of killing a school superintendent who used to live and work in the southern tier is back in western New York. According to the Chicago Chautauqua County Sheriff's Office, 42-year-old Anthony Taglianetti is in the county jail where he's going to remain until a court appearance tomorrow morning. Taglianetti is charged with second-degree murder for the September killing of 51-year-old Keith Reed Jr., who was found shot to death outside his home. He went on trial. Rob Taglianetti went on trial and he was pleading not guilty. The prosecution was saying it was exactly what you think it is. It's exactly what it sounds like. It was all about those emails. It was a jealous love. Shit went down. Bullets ended it all. Also, a receipt was found in Keith's garden, an ATM receipt linked to Rob's bank account. So, fair play to you, saying you did not do it. Also, in Rob's car, in a gold, gold ass Buick, which was also spot on CCTV <laughs> in Clymer, upstate New York. Uh, in that car, under the driver's seat, they found a revolver. Nice. The revolver literally had. Keith Reed's blood on the barrel. So hard to argue kind of with the facts, and the defense had an uphill battle, but they also had a plan. It was manipulation. <laughs> Mary had orchestrated the whole thing. This is a story about manipulation and... I can see where they're getting that. I do. But I doubt she manipulated him into doing anything. She just seems kind of like it's, I mean, there's a possibility. Maybe he refused to give her a divorce she wanted one and she knew it wasn't going to happen. So she figured she'd do something that would get him in prison, at least to where she could get a divorce or something like that. I don't know. Now there's doubt in my mind. Damn, I see. No, I don't ever need to be on a jury for shit. I'm too easily convinced. It's like, I mean, it's plausible. I'm just like, people who should die probably won't die because I'm like, bro, that could have happened. Then there's reasonable doubt. Exploitation. Mary Taglianetti. The wife of Rob Taglianetti is a master manipulator. She knew how to puppet people. She knew what strings to pull. She wanted her husband to find the sticky emails, they said. She wanted a showdown between the two men in her life. That maybe she was hoping Keith would be the winner. That he I mean, it's 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 not out of the realm of possibility, though. I mean, if you think about it, it's really not. I, I, I hate to say it, but some people just really crave drama. Men, women, children, they're, they're everyone. There's some people out there that just really craves that fucking dramatic bullshit. So, it wouldn't be out of the realm of possibility that maybe she did. Maybe she did want, you know... I'm jealous I don't know I don't know I don't know what could have been going through her head at the time I, I have no fucking clue like what it, yeah don't ever put me on a jury to have someone like put in prison or death penalty I... he would kill her husband in self defense the defense also suggested that Mary was the one writing uh, all of these nasty emails to Keith Reed. For one thing, all of the emails sent to Keith were from Mary's email address. Now, uh, Rob had demanded access to her email so he could see what she was sending to him, and so he was using her email address to send it back. But they were saying, you know, Mary was the one who was writing all these emails. In fact, there was one tip that kind of seemed like maybe he didn't write it, and it's very unique thing is that in one of the angry emails Rob Taglianetti sent to Keith Reed, he refers to himself as a former Marine. Now, I'm Irish, but I've met U.S. Marines and yeah, you're never a say former, former Marine. You're always no. a Marine. So him... Once you're a Marine, you die Marine. You never, you're never a former Marine. Yeah, that's weird. I've never met one. 
never in my life have I ever even known one. <laughs> I, the only time I've heard one is him say, I'm a tired Marine. Not a former, he's just a retired Marine. But by God, he'd still shoot you in the fucking face. Referring, referring to himself in a, as a former Marine. No. All in all, the jury found Rob guilty of the second degree murder of Keith Reed. He was sentenced to 25 years to life. And there you have it. A good man, you know, who just wanted the best, the best for those random, especially for the youth who, you know, they're the future. Again, people say that, but I don't believe it. Ended. I'm reasonable doubt person, uh, jury, juror number seven. I'm, damn it. His life brutally ended over. Between the former, between, and if she wanted to be sneaky about it, she would have just made a different fucking Gmail and started doing it. I, how hard is it to make a new Gmail? It's not. It's really not. I, I, I have to make one quite often. I have so many Gmail accounts. I don't remember half of them. It happens. It happens. Some stupid ass fucking emails executed for it. A messed up case all resulting from a one night stand years before and some strange emails. The lesson from this one is, and I'm always trying to think of the lessons in these cases, is sometimes just step away from the computer. Sometimes you can leave those messages, you can just leave them on red, it's fine. Thank you yeah. so much for watching, I really appreciate you being- Yeah. <laughs> Pink battles. I mean, okay, he did put reasonable doubt into my head, like, what if the girl did kind of orchestrate I mean, don't get me wrong, dude still went down there, killed him. Dude still appreciate it. he took that into his own hands, but what if she was kind of like trying to orchestrate something to happen? You know what I mean? Maybe not to the extent that it did happen, just maybe like put him in his place or whatever the case may be. What if she was kind of like pulling some strings and then it just, it got fucked fast. You know what I mean? <clears throat> we don't know. We'll never know. We wasn't there. We wasn't part of the big idea, the big plan. We, we'll, now fuck that shit. <laughs> All right, I really enjoyed today's story. Thank you so much for the suggestion. I really do appreciate it. All right, if you all enjoyed today's story as much as I did, please think about subscribing. If you're a fan of the spooky, scary, strange, deranged things that just make you, make you do this. Think about subscribing. I do it quite often. As always, be good to one another. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. I don't do emails. I receive emails. I check my emails. I don't send emails. Well, not like maybe once a year. Yeah, that sounds about right.